Good evening and welcome to the League of Women Voters of Snohomish County Forum for Candidates for Lake Stevens City Council. I'm your moderator, Karen Madsen. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of Snohomish County and joining me tonight are candidates for Lake Stevens City Council for positions one and two, Kim Daughtry and Michelle Hampton vying for position one, and Gary Petersagen and Joyce Copley for position two. Candidates for position six and seven on the Lake Stevens City Council are participating in a different forum. The League thanks all candidates for running for office, for your willingness to serve the community if elected, and for participating in this forum. It's the policy of the League to be nonpartisan. Therefore, we neither endorse nor oppose candidates or parties. We do take positions on issues which we have studied and on which we have reached consensus. Ground rules for this forum were sent ahead of time to all candidates, but let me take a moment to explain the question and answer period rules before we get started. Opening and closing questions have been shared with each of you, with all the candidates. Other questions have not been shared, but we've made each candidate aware of the issue areas the forum plans to cover. And we thank all the community members who sent us recommendation for those issue areas. I will pose the questions. Each candidate will have 60 seconds to answer each of the first questions. 90 seconds will be allowed for the answer to the final question. And I'll be sure to remind you when that change takes place. Keep an eye on the timer. When the time ends, you need to stop talking. We're using a countdown timer visible to all candidates, shows elapsed time, alerts you when there are 15 seconds left and when time is up, limits will be enforced. When the candidates hear that timer turn red and hear the chime, they need to be finished. I'll change the response order for each question rotating through the candidates. We, or, we determined an order randomly before the beginning of the forum and the order for the first question will be Mr. Peter Zagan, then Ms. Copley, then Ms. Daughtry, uh, Mr. Daughtry, I'm sorry, and then Ms. Hampton. Uh, it will then rotate next, uh, the next person will go next and on, so on throughout the questions. And let's begin. Mr. Peter Zagan, you're up first. Could you tell us please what qualifications and experience make you a strong candidate for this position? Having served on the city council for the last four and a half years, uh, and uh, prior to that, six years on the planning commission, Lake Stevens Planning Commission, I've been involved in real estate throughout my career for over 30 years, uh, mostly in the real or uh, development uh, portion of real estate and have been a, a business owner for about 20 years of those uh, 30 years. So bringing that experience to the city council, uh, as well as past service on the planning commission, familiarizing myself with the city policies and procedures and how uh, things actually work in the city. And then the last four and a half years uh, involved in the city council. Um, I feel those are strong qualifications in order to move our city forward. Thank you, Ms. Copley. Ms. Copley, you need to unmute so we can hear your response. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Um, my experience is I have been um, in the aerospace industry for a number of years. I'm familiar with the working class. I know what it's like to cross the trestle to have to pay my bills and care about the neighborhood I live in. I have also uh, been a public servant uh, the past few years with the city of Shoreline. Prior to that, I worked for um, a, a, another large company down in South Seattle. I believe my strong traits are, is I bring planning and community development experience to the table. Uh, to me, it's more than, um, than, than zoning. It is a por portion of it is zoning, which I do have experience with dealing with those issues and bringing things better for the city. But I also have compassion for the city. I have been watching things that I see and have heard and have been tapped on the shoulder that could do better. Thank you very much, Ms. Copper. Oh, Mr. Daughtry. Thank you. I've been on the city council for 12 years. 
Um, so that's quite a bit of experience. Uh, it started when we had 7,500 people in the city and now we're up at 39,000. Uh, I've also been very active in the region, especially in the transportation area. I, I serve on the PSRC Transportation Policy Board. I serve on the, the skit board in the, in the county. I'm also currently the chair of the Community Transit uh, Board of Directors. I've been on the Board of Directors for 10 years. Uh, I'm also a business owner, small business owner in the city of Lake Stevens. I've been in the city of Lake Stevens for about 20 years, very active in the chamber, very active in all of the other types of community uh, events that go on, in, including Aquafest and others. And uh, I just uh, I just get really involved in that community. I, that's, I'm always involved in the community. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ms. Hampton. Ms. Hampton, you'll need to unmute. Sorry about that. So first and foremost, I am a concerned community member who wants Lake Stevens to be the best that it can be. And I think I would be an asset on the city council to help accomplish that goal. I am a military spouse, now retired, a military mom and a very proud grandma. As for my career path, I am an attorney. I am licensed in another jurisdiction. And why that's excellent for Lake Stevens is I have zero conflicts of interest. I know how to read, decipher, and interpret language that is in contracts because contracts come before council all the time and they are asked to be approved. I am different than anyone else that is currently on council or running for council. I am not dependent upon any state or federal dollars for my livelihood and no one owns me. There is no interest that ties me to a certain vote and my only goal is to do what is good and right for Lake Stevens. And frankly, I'm tired of politicians telling you what you want to hear and then doing what they want. So I want to do good. Thank you, Ms. Hampton. We'll move on to the second question. Question, Ms. Copley, you'll lead off on this one. What are the biggest challenges facing Lake Stevens and what are its greatest strengths? Ms. Copley, please unmute. The biggest challenges uh, I am hearing from residents and concerned residents is the trestle the trestle and sidewalks. Um, my, I'm sorry, pre repeat the question one more time. Uh, you're muted. Yeah, now I'm muted, I apologize. What are the biggest challenges facing this city and what are its greatest strengths? The biggest challenges are the trestle and sidewalks. I just uh, talked to uh, John Lovick earlier, uh, waiting on the infrastructure bill regarding the trestle, uh, the sidewalks, the, the massive building. We've got to do better. We have got to do better and orchestrate and, our plan, and plan our community better so that everybody can have input and we can address these issues because mothers and even runners and people who are trying to use, trying to beat, walk around in Lake Stevens are having a hard time with sidewalks and also people are talking about some of the trees, the trees are an issue, uh, overcrowding schools. So these are some issues that I am getting directly from the residents that live here that are paying taxes in the city of Lake Stevens. And as a public servant, we gotta get back to serving the public. And that is my goal in being in position two and running for position two is showing people what a public servant is supposed to be. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Daughtry. Well, as stated, uh, the biggest challenges are our uh, rapid growth. Uh, it always puts um, puts challenges to the city of, of our size. Uh, comes with a, a whole lot of a whole host of travel. I mean, we've got traffic problems. We've got sidewalk problems. We've got uh, the the problems that we have with the growth in the schools. It all is all problems, and every one of those things has answers to them. We've been dealing with them for several years and trying to get better and better. We're getting there. Uh, and I, th I think we're just doing a great job. Uh, we have plans in place for quite a few things that are coming to fruition, uh, depending on the money. It always depends on the money and how we decide to spend that money. Uh, our strengths are our people. Uh, we have a great staff in our city and we have great community uh, leaders in our city and great community. And that's one of the biggest strengths of Lake Stevens is, uh, is the people that we have around us. Thank you, sir. Ms. Hampton? Yes, thank you. So I think one of the biggest challenges facing Lake Stevens 
is that the vast majority of folks who do not sit on city council, because there's only seven members who sit on city council, is that they feel like they're not being heard. And I want to change that because here's what I promise you. I promise you that when you reach out to me, I will respond. And I will respond by giving you the presumption and assumption that you are coming to me with a legitimate concern out of good intentions in your heart. And what I promise to bring to the table is an open mind and open ears. Because I believe that the more community involvement we have, the better things get. Now, reasonable people can disagree, but I will listen and I want to work with everyone and hear their voice. That's part of my slogan on my signs, your voice in Lake Stevens. And I mean it because I'm tired of not being heard. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Peter Sagan. Yes, thank you. Uh, we, ha we have a couple of issues that are kind of at the top of the barometer and one has been talked about and that's growth in general. But the, the other prong of that is economic development. And with that goes in concert is land use. Um, we have a situation in Lake Stevens where a vast majority of the people with the exception of the last year leave every day and go to work somewhere else. We need to have an economic development um, program that is more attractive to getting some jobs located here within our city. We need to retain our people within our city that will alleviate some of the traffic problems. The city of Lake Stevens will not be able to solve the trestle issue. We may be able to help with solving that issue, but we alone cannot solve that. And so when we talk about those issues, um, you know, how do we pay for things is the biggest question. As far as strengths in our community. Thank you, Mr. Peter Sagan. We'll move on to the next question. Mr. Daughtry, you'll lead on this one. What initiatives would you support to address homelessness, food insecurity, drug and alcohol abuse, and mental health issues in your community? Well, that's a big list. Um, all of them have different ways of being handled. I think one of the biggest issues we can do is to help our police officers by embedding social workers with them to handle some of those issues uh, at a better level uh, with uh, more compassion and uh, and get the, get the help that the people need in all of those areas. Um, it is working. We have done it uh, in this county and with our city within our city. And uh, I, I believe that that's we need to continue doing that and uh, strengthen that particular area of our our police force. Um, as far as the homelessness is, issue is uh, that that revolves around so many different problems that it's really hard to get your hand around. But one of those is affordable housing. And one of the things we need to do is take a look at how do we uh, change some of our land use codes, et cetera, et cetera, and fees and structures that'll reduce the amount of money it takes to build housing. Thank you. On to uh, Mr. Peter Sagan. Yes, thank you. I'll oh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I did that in the wrong order. I apologize. It would be Ms. Hampton next. My apologies. Oh, no worries. No need to apologize. So thank you for the question. Um, yes, that, that is a ginormous issue that's on a lot of people's hearts and minds, including mine. Uh, right now, Lake Stevens just simply does not have the social services in place to uh, address those needs. Uh, I would point out that we do contribute to the Snohomish County Health District, and I know they are instrumental in, in assisting folks who have these issues. Um, but one of the things that really concerns me is that, um, you know, my, my opponent uh, last term and the term before that, who also sits on the Community Transit Board, uh, promised that he would get essentially orca type passes for our young people, our students, our seniors, uh, our low income folks, so that they can get bus transportation to receive those services. And I would like to take care of that. So please elect me, put me on a transit board and I will take care of it. Thank you. Mr. Peter Sagan, take it away now. Thank you. I, th this is a huge issue and it takes dollars to solve a lot of these issues. We as a city, do not have the resources to expend to, to 
encompass all of these things. So what we need to do and what we are doing is obtaining partnerships. We, we partner with the, the uh, um, uh, veterans, or not the veterans, but the, I uh, uh, can't think of their name right now, but um, partnerships is about the only way that we can get our, ourselves to address these things. The other thing, it, it gets back to economic development. We need to have economic development in order to provide the dollars necessary to start taking care of some of these issues. And we simply don't have it at this point. It's, uh, we, we are a community of rooftops, residential housing, and we simply need uh, more commercial development. Thank you. Finally, Ms. Copley, if you'd unmute and answer that last question. Yes, uh, so um, my, my, what I have learned uh, in my campaign, I spoke with Stephanie Sherry and Sophia Nuez, who uh, does the food bank. And the food bank and a lot of the poverty and a lot of the issues that are going on here are not on anybody's radar. And it's unfortunate that that is, that is the case. But after the campaign, I do plan on working with them to bring the proper social services so we can work together and help the people who are on the bottom that often forget about, uh, that are often forgotten about. They are doing a great job at the food bank. April and I took a tour with them. We learned there's, there's so much hunger here and there's so much a need for volunteers and, and the people who do need special services that we have got to stop the building. It, commercial building is not the answer. It is bringing those people from social service and the food bank to, so that we can take care of our own here in Lake Stevens. We have the capacity. We just need the right people to do it. Ms. Hampton, you'll take the lead on this next question. Some of you have referenced this issue. What measures would you support to keep housing options affordable in Lake Stevens? Wow, that's, that's a big one. Absolutely true. Uh, I think some of the things that we need to get creative on is developing more, I'm going to call them granny flats or in-law flats. We passed an ordinance that allows for that. And I would love to see the homeowners here in Lake Stevens take advantage of that. That does two things. That allows folks who couldn't necessarily have um, uh, money to purchase a home. It allows them access into Lake Stevens. And it's also a benefit to the homeowners who are here that can maybe put a few dollars that are, that are needed into their pockets as well. I also like the idea of uh, mixed use where maybe you've got some commercial on the bottom and living quarters up above. I think if we put our heads together, we can come up with some creative ideas to allow people entry into Lake Stevens because right now it's, it's difficult to get here. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Peter Sagan. Thank you. I love this question because we go round and round on this one uh, in a lot of our meetings. It's a very simple process, supply and demand. We simply don't have enough supply. And we are, as a community, uh, we are essentially getting to a point where we are built out. We need to expand our urban growth boundary areas in order to accommodate some additional development. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple issue, supply and demand. Land drives pretty much a lot of the housing costs in our area. Land is very expensive. On top of that, the development regulations that are in place from every agency in the state make everything very difficult. We are a very regulated state as far as development goes, and it simply drives up the cost for a lot of things. So if you don't have more supply, um, gosh sakes, um, we have the demand for it. The prices are gonna continue to escalate. Thank you, Ms. Copley. Um, my answer to that is there is a, um, that does make housing affordable. It's called green incentives. I just did this for the city of Shoreline for a hundred uh, building unit. And what we did was um, th there's, a, there's a program called green incentive and you have to apply for it. You have to 
follow all their guidelines. And what we do is we waive all of their fees, which makes it more affordable. So you're cutting down several hundred thousand dollars in fees to make the housing more affordable. So if this is possible in Shoreline, surely it's possible here to operate in some green incentives. This bring down the cost of the construction down which allows it to be more affordable. It is some, It is a program. I'm sure if they offer it in King County, it's something that we could look into doing here. So that to me would be a great step is to, if we could possibly get some affordable housing uh, built green. Thank you. Mr. Daughtry. Well, I agree. Incentives are a great way to try to do things. We have actually tried that in Lake Stevens, not that particular one that uh, Ms. Copley is talking about because Quite frankly, I've never heard of that. Um, uh, interesting uh, concept. However, uh, the ones that we have tried have actually failed. Uh, nobody's actually taken advantage of it. Uh, I also believe the same things that uh, Ms. Hampton has said, uh, being mixed use, uh, the uh, ADU units that we've already passed, we've already tried to get some mixed use in into the area. Those all work really, really well. And they are being taken advantage of in some of our areas. Uh, the other thing, though, is the GMA itself. Uh, the GMA is very strict on what we can and cannot do, uh, and it hasn't been looked at in a long time. It needs to be taken. That needs to be taken care of. And then the EPA or the Department of Ecology coming out and basically doing things that are opposed to the GMA it just makes it really hard. Thank you very much, Mr. Daughtry. We're back to the top of the lineup with Mr. Petershagen on this next question. What is your strategy for working productively with your council colleagues and with members of the public whose ideas or life experiences are different from yours? Listen, our different, we, we have differences with everybody on the screen here. The only way we can move forward is if we can listen to each other. Pretty simple. Thank you, Ms. Copley. I am different, <laughs> uh, but I take that and I wear that as a badge of honor. I have learned that um, being inclusive and getting to know people where they are. I meet people where they are and I've, I've done a lot of doorbelling and I've met a lot of people and I've, I'm a people person, so I quite enjoy it. So coming together with people, just like uh, Mrs. Hampton said, we're going to have differences, but at the end of the day, it's what's for the greater good of all. And that's all the residents, all the taxpayers here in Lake Stevens, which we are public servants too. I enjoy being a public servant and I like listening to people and talking to people and try to find some common ground that we can come together and understand and know that we're not going to get everything we want, but we can reach a common ground together if we respect each other. Thank you. Mr. Daughtry. Well, pretty much listening. Uh, I've listened to everybody that talks to me. Uh, I have differences of opinion with most of them, some of them, all of them sometimes. It just kind of depends on what the subject is. And there's many, many subjects that come around the city. Uh, I have had my mind changed right in the middle of a vote before uh, based on uh, something that one of the council members said, or based on public testimony, uh, coming into something with my mind pretty much made up after we're reading every, the, you know, over the uh, packet that we get every every week, uh, and then have my mind just changed because somebody said something I didn't take into consideration. Um, yeah, you need to listen, and we need to have some civility. Uh, that, that's what it's all about. Thank you, sir. Ms. Hampton. Yes. Well, in my line of work as an attorney, I have also worked as a mediator and I have been in mediation on both sides, both acting as the as the mediator and advocating for my client. And because of that experience, and we're talking decades worth, um, I am pretty good at building consensus. Uh, but one thing is for sure, I am not so proud as to walk into a room thinking I have all the answers all by myself. And I am never shocked when we can get into a room of people with different points of view, start by building a consensus, and then get the finer points from each person's perspective and build the best mousetrap possible. 
And so I am very eager to work with everybody to build consensus and again, do good for Lake Stevens. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Copley, you get the lead on this very next question, which is, what are the most pressing environmental issues Lake Stevens faces, and what would you propose to address them? I, I get a lot of, of concerns about the stormwater and the drainage. Um, that's, that's the most popular one that I, I get questioned for. Um, uh, how would I address them? I would Drainage engineers and, and stormwater engineers are very important. I, I, I work with them every day. They, they go to school for that. They know their job. We have to rely on professional people. Uh, as a sitting city council member or as a potential city, city, city council member, we have to demand the advice of the professionals. And we have to know that they and, and know and respect their job and get it done the way they say get it done and follow through. Get the permits we need, do it correctly, get it done and get it out the way. And it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. Let's just do what's right for the city. And that's clearing up our, our stormwater and our drainage issues. Thank you. Mr. Daughtry. Well, stormwater is number one issue for environmental uh, concerns, especially with the largest lake in the county. Uh, and we are a city around a big thousand acre lake. Um, one of the biggest problems we do have uh, concerning stormwater is there's a lot of stormwater ponds that are actually owned by HOAs that are not being taken care of. And the city council and the staff of Lake Stevens are considering different ways of making that problem go away. Uh, one of those, the ways of doing it is to have the city just take them over and get them get the work done uh, the way it's supposed to be done. And, uh, and that would be, you know, an easy fix if we just did that. The problem would be is how do we pay for it? As always, we have to be able to pay for things. And that's one of those things that we're trying to work through. But uh, I have to agree, stormwater is a big issue. We need to take care of it. Take care of our lake. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Hampton. Thank you. Um, so environmentally speaking, the lake in Lake Stevens is our greatest asset. It yes. is the gem of our city and our economic driver. So we mm -hmm. must protect the lake, its waterways, and that's through intentional and meaningful management environmentally. Again, storm water, storm drains, we've got to make sure they have all the proper silt filters and that they are maintained properly. Just having them is not enough. Uh, we also need community education in uh, particularly fertilizers and pesticides that could run off into the lake. I think it's also important to talk about air quality because uh, I want to make sure that our Clean Air Act is followed and enforced, particularly with regard to the cannabis industry. We've invited them into our city, but they should not be a nuisance to the neighbors. We should all be able to enjoy our city equally. And um, let's also talk about charging stations for electronic cars. We can't do anything about existing, but it can be part of new Thank permitting. Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Sagan. Yeah, storm drainage is uh, certainly a hot topic. And I, I would say that the city has taken that issue seriously. We've been kind of on a deficit for the last few years, but recently in the last 18 months, we actually formed a stormwater utility to address the issues that Council Member Daughtry has talked about, the, the individual storm ponds and neighborhoods, uh, street runoff and the lake. And so that issue is being addressed. As we get down to it, it's again, how do we pay for it? We increased the storm drainage fees uh, fairly dramatically uh, in the city here about, again, about 18 months ago, 16 months ago, somewhere in there. And so we are starting to address those issues. So that is a program that we are working on. We will continue to work on it. I would suggest that we will probably see further fee increases in the future because of the cost to comply with clean water is ever escalating. Ma'am, you're muted. You've been muted. 
I've been muted that whole time. And I yes. even got a message from our wonderful host to unmute me, but I was reading your question. Let's try that again. Mr. Daughtry, I bet you'd like to hear it before you have to answer it, wouldn't you? I can answer, I can answer just a question in my head if you like. There you go. I apologize. What should be your city's plan to deal with existing or potential racial inequities? Wow. Um, so just plan to do that. It, that it's such a tough question. Uh, it's racial equity uh, is something that is it should be just common. Uh, everybody should is equal. Uh, everybody should be equitable. Every everything should just be right for everybody. Uh, and and there's no reason to think that it shouldn't be that way. Nobody should think that. As a city planning, it is, it, we need to look at, see what our processes are in the city. We need to see what our police force is doing with uh, how we treat people, all people. Uh, we need to look at uh, what the access to the city is. And, and we need to find out if there's people that feel like they don't have that access and we need to fix it, whatever that is. And, and it doesn't really matter. It could be you know, indigenous peoples, it could be. Thank you, sir. Ms. Hampton? Yes, thank you. Um, very much a hot topic. And um, all I can say is, of course, every human being is, should be treated equally. Every person is deserving of the same dignity and respect. And that is why, given my profession, I am very grateful that Lady Liberty is blindfolded. Having said that, there is no excuse. Everyone should have the same opportunities. And when we find a situation or a circumstance where people have been singled out wrongfully, we have federal laws and state laws in place and no one should get to skirt. Everybody lives under the same rules. And if you break the rules, you pay the penalty. I, I have no tolerance for this. We all need to be treated with dignity and respect, period. Thank you, Mr. Peter Sagan. Yes, thank you. I, I couldn't have answered that question any better than candidate Hampton could have. That was very thoughtful and, and uh, well-spoken. The one thing I would add to that is that we have taken some steps under the mayor's leadership. We have formed an advisory uh, group to help us with some racial inequities and are exploring those things. And uh, those are being addressed. So um, I would also add, you know, we've, we've had quite a bit of discussion about this issue in the last year, almost, uh, gosh sake, 16 months now. And I, you know, we've, we've talked about this issue of Lake Stevens not being inclusive. And I, I've lived here a long time. Uh, I don't find that our community is not inclusive. So uh, I hope with the mayor's efforts, comments from uh, candidate Hampton, that we Thank can you. continue Thank down you this very much, sir. Ms. Copley, final answer on this one? And please unmute. Don't make my mistake. Yes, of course. Uh, thank you. Um, being, um, being an African-American woman, uh, it's, it's very unfortunate that Mr. Peter Shagan feels that the advisory board uh, that the city council passed was uh, merely a Band-Aid. Uh, I called in. Uh, I was on the um, DNI seat as an advisor, and we, we asked for a committee. We got an advisory board. I don't feel this topic is a topic of concern of anyone outside uh, of the typical white um, category. It is a concern of mine. Uh, I've lived here for a number of years and there have been stories and there have been issues that needs to be addressed. We asked for a committee, we got an advisory board. This topic will come up again because once I'm in that seat, it does need to be a committee. An advisory board is simply a Band-Aid, and we can do better than that. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Hampton, you'll lead off on this last question. This question allows you 90 seconds to answer. 
Uh, the timer will be reset when it comes up. And the question is, what additional issues or information would you like to bring to the attention of the community? Wow. Thank you very much. So here's what I think. I think Lake Stevens is the place that we love. We live here with our families. We want to be able to work here, grow here, play here. We want our kids to be safe here. We want our seniors to be safe here. We want to be safe too, even though we're somewhere in the middle. And I would say we need to keep our focus. And the focus is on doing the best for Lake Stevens for all of us. And part of what that includes is public safety. We have the, right now, we have the fifth safest city in the state. We are several points lower in crime than the average. And it's because we have a very well-trained police force. And I would like to see about two more officers and a patrol car so that we can address the needs of our residents, because particularly because of the new annexation and our growth. Second, um, economic growth and the development of 20th Street Southeast is really going to help and serve our community. I would like to see that put on as a priority to get that going. That is going to help us in so many ways address issues that we need money to pay for, and that is a prime way to accomplish it through the sales tax revenue. And finally, you know, let's all be grateful for and continue to protect our green spaces. Thank you very much. Mr. Peter Sagan. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lake Stevens is each of our homes. And with that comes that kind of sense of ownership in the sense that we've, we've grown up here, our kids have grown up here, and this is a place we can call home. So it's near and dear to our hearts. We can move this community forward further. We've done a lot in the last five years, a lot. Uh, revitalized downtown. Uh, we're working on 20th Street with the cooperation of the city of Everett. Hopefully we can move that further along faster. Uh, we have some issues with the water pipelines there that we're trying to address. Mm -hmm. But we've also welcomed for about 4,500 people to uh, the city through annexations. So we do have this community, one community around the lake philosophies kind of being fulfilled. And so hopefully that can bring everybody together. But we do have to realize that, you know, we are a growing community. We will continue to grow. People want to be here. And we have good schools. We have good rec recreation. And fundamentally, we have a good community. Public safety is a large part of that, as highlighted by candidate Hampton. Uh, I would like to see more enhancements to our police situation. Uh, we're bringing on more people. And um, we're making a push in this next budget to hopefully increase that by more than two officers. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Copley. Um, again, I, I'm the same way. Uh, I love Lake Stevens. I, my goal is to retire here. I want to uh, bring more transparency to the public. I want the public to know that as a public servant, you're involved in the changes as well. You're involved as a choice as well. I want to get back to governing the way we should be. And I'm excited to uh, be a part of the Lake Stevens community. I've enjoyed it here for several years and and my children and my grandchildren have also come out and, and enjoyed it with me. I, I like to see a lot more uh, of, of the um, 20th Street developed. I'm, I'm excited to see what's going on there. I'm excited to be a part of possibly bringing in some sidewalks so the moms don't have to worry about their children and trying to catch the bus and get hit by the bus. Um, I'm excited to see the infrastructure come through so that we can have you know, a decent trestle. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm glad that the city of Lake Stevens can be one community around the lake, but we've got to acknowledge that there are more black and brown people that are moving here. And, and it is not the status quo that we're all gonna have to move around. We're gonna have to learn to live together, and, but we can enjoy it. Uh, that's why I posted um, on my website how people can keep the lake clean because it is a beautiful lake. We all want to enjoy it and we want to keep our amenities here nice. So I'm excited to be here in Lake Stevens and I look forward to serving the community in the future. And Mr. Daughter, you have the last word on this one. Wow, the last word. Okay, so I have, uh, like I said, been on the council for quite a while. I've been in the community for a lot longer than that. 
I spent 25 years in the military and was all over the all over the United States and different communities. And I can tell, in my experience, at least Stevens is the best community I have ever been in. Uh, the people are wonderful. They volunteer for things. They get things done. Uh, they have fun. They work hard. They play hard. Uh, and it's up to us to make sure that they're safe in doing that, giving them the spaces to do it. One of the biggest issues we have right now is a lack of spaces for our children and our teens to um, enjoy their team sports and do practice. We need more practice fields and we're working on that, but it's going to be a, a, a large one to, to get accomplished. Mostly because like Mr. Peter Sagan says, we're running out of buildable land. Uh, so that's a, that's an issue that we have to take care of. And so to be able to get people to come back home and be able to recreate in their own home, in their own city, is a very important portion of what we have, have to accomplish. And uh, we do have the, one of the safest cities, and we're trying to maintain that. Uh, the budget is coming up right now where we're trying to get more police officers. We're trying to get more public works people. We're trying to get a parks department put together. Uh, there's all kinds of things going on. And uh it's a great time to live in Lake Stevens. Thank you so very much. The League sure appreciates these candidates for joining us and for running for office. A recording of this forum and others will be available on the League of Women Voters of Snohomish County website and YouTube channel. You can find links at lwvsnoho.org. We encourage you to explore additional information about all candidates. The Snohomish County voter pamphlet will be mailed around October 13th. Vote411.org, sponsored by the League of Women Voters, is another good source for nonpartisan voting information. And general election ballots will be mailed October 14th. Election day is November 2nd. Please vote. This concludes our forum. Thank you all for joining us.